Hello everyone and welcome back, hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to be discussing Glorious, in particular certain aspects of the film's ending, going into what I think really happened because I don't think everything is quite as it seems. Glorious is about a man called Wes who gets trapped in a public rest stop bathroom and begins to hear a mysterious voice coming from the stall's glory hole. Now if that doesn't entice you enough, the voice claims to be that of a god. One with powers that can destroy worlds and galaxies at will. That's it. That's the premise for this film. The film begins with Wes dishevelled and somewhat erratic, stopping at a rest stop after what has clearly been a very long drive. All he seems to have with him is a small red box, which, he's, which he holds onto dearly, so it's safe to assume that it's filled with something interesting. He stays overnight at the rest stop, getting drunk and burning pictures of a woman who we assume to be an ex-girlfriend, before passing out and waking up with no pants on. This is where things get interesting. Whilst Wes is throwing up in the toilet, a voice beckons him from the next stall. The two of them talk for a little bit through the pleasure hole, until it becomes clear that this isn't just small talk. The god, known as Gat, has been waiting for Wes, because only he can give him what he needs if he's going to stop his father, an even angrier, more powerful being, from destroying the universe. So what is it that Gat so desperately requires from Wes? That's right, his liver. I was probably just as disappointed as you when I found out that there was going to be no cock removal or, you know, no funny business, but hey, there you go. So after a really hilarious scene in which Wes thinks that this god <laughs> requires his penis <laughs> and he, uh, he proceeds to insert his member into the pleasure hole and Gat is like, what the hell is that? There's a incredible line of dialogue in the scene and I had to write it down when I heard it because I didn't want to forget it. Upon seeing his penis, Gat says this, what the hell is that? You thought your human penis was going to save the universe? <laughs> it's the fact he says your human penis. <laughs> like, what, what other kind of penis would it be? So once I stopped laughing hysterically at that scene, it got me thinking about the whole glory hole aspect and its relevance to the actual story. And there just isn't one. You take away the misunderstanding of what Wes thinks Gat wants him to do. It's nothing more than a gimmick. And I understand filmmakers thinking they need to use gimmicks to try and get people to watch and engage with the films, but it's still a little bit annoying. I was kind of hoping to see some. Uh, I was kind of hoping to see some shady stuff, but yeah, there you go. Henry, he's not allowed up there. Come on, good boy, good boy. <laughs> Cheeky boy. Sorry, where were we? So, after Wes successfully removes his own liver, we see more cryptic flashbacks and memories from Wes, and are given some crucial information. The woman we assume he has just broken up with wasn't a victim of heartbreak, but was in fact the victim of Wes's much more sinister pastime. It's easy to miss, and I admit that I missed this myself. It was only after re-watching the last 20 minutes that I noticed it myself. But Wes is a serial killer. In one crucial flashback, we see Wes's partner confront him over a box of photographs she's found. Inside aren't past lover's mementos or love letters, but Polaroid pictures of Wes's victims, seen clearly by their pained expressions. You can even see Wes holding a knife, mirroring perfectly the act that he is currently performing on himself, removing his liver. The red box in Wes's car was this same box of photographs, and if you look closer in the back of his car, you can see a huge bundle of clothes belonging to all the women he has killed. Now this brings me on to my main point. Did any of this even happen? Now I'm not questioning whether Wes was really in this rest stop and he was really having this conversation with a god or whether he is a serial killer or whether he did remove his own liver. I think all that happened. I'm just questioning the reality in which it happened. The first thing you should ask is why did Gat want Wes's liver? Why that organ? What's so special about the liver? Now, if I was a god and I was looking to fulfill some sort of weird human anatomy bucket list, I'd go for the heart or something, or the brain, or, oh god, I don't know, the penis. So then you look at the significance the liver has on a human body, and it's hinted that Wes has got something of a drinking problem, which, obviously, alcoholism massively affects the liver. If you end up with liver failure, you know, it, it can kill you. I believe that the entire sequence of events that we see unfolding in this restroom is viewed through the lens of Wes's guilt and conscience. Wes is now punishing himself 
It's hinted at that he has a drinking problem, so that would make sense as to why he would want to remove his liver. Removing his liver denies him the coping mechanism of drinking, which in turn results in complete self-destruction. Or, you know, he would just bleed out like he does in the end of the film. Gat, who is voiced perfectly by J.K. Simmons, going from being playful to menacing in a beat's notice, is just another manifestation of Wes's guilt. Gat states numerous times that his father is a destroyer of worlds. He wants nothing more than to see life as we know it obliterated. He is also insistent that Wes be the one who voluntarily removes his liver because, well, Gat simply isn't there. Wes knows that he has to stop now before it's too late, before he takes another victim, another woman. If women are the creators of life, then men are the destroyers. Well, you could say, well, what about the Gary character? The man who comes in, who is Wes's only chance to escape. Gary isn't there either. You could say that Gary represents Wes's inner desire to leave, to, to get out, to abandon shit, to turn his back on sacrificing himself for the good of the universe. 